Hello everyone, myself Dr. Suresh, Professor of Biochemistry and in this video, we will talk about the specialized products that are coming from phenylalanine and tyrosine. So, the important substances that are derived from tyrosine, obviously phenylalanine has to convert to tyrosine and whatever the fate of tyrosine is obviously the fate of pyruvate, right? We have to say the specialized products both are coming from phenylalanine and tyrosine, right? So, the first thing has to be synthesized from the tyrosine that is thyroid hormones T3 and T4. Second is pigment uh, that means skin pigment that is melanin and next is neurotransmitters like catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine and dopamine. So these are all the important uh, substances that are derived in from phenylalanine and thyrosine. So now we will see first melanin synthesis. So how melanin is produced from if someone asks like a phenylalanine how melanin is producing from phenylalanine. So first we have to say phenylalanine. converting into tyrosine by the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase and now the rest of the steps as like for tyrosine. So tyrosine first converted into dopa by the enzyme tyrosinase. Okay, here also there is a requirement of molecular oxygen. Okay, tyrosine is converted into dopa. Dopa is nothing but dihydroxyphenyl. That means one more hydroxyl group you are adding to tyrosine. Tyrosine is already having single hydroxyl group and dopa is having two hydroxyl groups. Okay. So, the main function of tyrosinase is here to add hydroxyl group to tyrosine to convert tyrosine to dihydroxyphenylalanine and same enzyme there is different function okay dopa converting into dopaquinone by the same enzyme tyrosinase which converting dopa into dopaquinone that means it is removing uh, hydrogens from the hydroxyl groups and making them to quinone substance okay and now this dopaquinone converted into indole quinone and indole quinone to melanin. So the main remember enzyme in melanin formation is tyrosinase. If there is defect in tyrosinase, tyrosine cannot form melanin. So this is the enzyme you have to remember. The first two steps of melanin synthesis catalyzed by tyrosinase enzyme. Okay. So tyrosine to dopa, dopa to dopaquinone, dopaquinone to indole quinone and indole quinone to melanin. So this is how melanin is synthesized. So tyrosinase and tyrosine hydroxylase, what's the difference? So both the enzymes add hydroxyl group to tyrosine to produce dihydroxyphenylalanine. Tyrosine is present in uh, melanoblast. Okay, the enzyme produces dopa which is used for melanin synthesis. Whereas tyrosine hydroxylase is present in adrenal medulla and the dopa thus generated is used for epinephrine synthesis. So the functioning of tyrosinase and tyrosine hydroxylase is same. But the location of these enzymes is different. Tyrosinase is present in melanoblast. Okay, and tyrosine hydroxyl is present in adrenal medulla. Both generate dopa. Dopa which is produced in melanoblast will be diverted for melanin synthesis. But in case of adrenal medulla, whatever the dopa is generated is diverted towards epinephrine synthesis. Thus, even in tyrosine deficient person, epinephrine synthesis is normal. That means if the person is having albinism, okay, that because of the deficiency of tyrosinase, need not to suffer with uh, neurotransmitter deficiency like uh, adrenal hormones, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Because the location is different, that person could able to, the albinism person could able to synthesize epinephrine or norepinephrine normal quantities. Clinical applications of melanin. So what are the clinical applications to say first copper deficiency? Since tyrosine is a copper containing enzyme because tyrosine require a metal I mean like a substance that is copper. So most of the enzymes they require coenzymes are uh, inorganic substances. So this inorganic substance for tyrosinase is copper. So in case copper is not there, this tyrosinase will not function actively and leads to melanin deficiency. Okay. So the pigmentation during the disturbances you can see in pigmentation during copper deficiency. Hair synthesized at the time of deficiency may be depigmented. If copper deficiency is intermittent, alternate black and white regions may be seen in the hair, black type of hair. And malignant melanoma, melanoblasts, especially in junctional navy may multiply to give rise to malignant melanoma. Me uh, melanogen may be excreted through urine in such conditions. In case of malignant melanoma, this melanogen can be seen in urine. Leucoderma, when tyrosinase or melanin forming cells are both are absent from epidermis, leucoderma results. That means white patches you can see. And graying of hair is also due to disappearance of melanocytes from the hair root. So these are all the clinical applications of melanin. And one more is albinism. Albinism and leucoderma are different. In albinism, tyrosinase is absent in melanocytes all over the body. So, because of the tyrosinase enzyme deficiency, you will get albinism. Now, 
Second uh, important substance will be synthesizing from uh, tyrosine that is catecholamines. Now we will see the pathway of catecholamines. So tyrosine is converting into dopa as I said the enzyme is tyrosine hydroxylase. So in melanin synthesis we have seen tyrosine is located in melanoblast and this tyrosine hydroxylase is located in adrenal medulla. So both are requiring molecular oxygen here and here there is a requirement of tetrahydrobiopterin like uh, phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme in conversion of phenylalanine to tyrosine. And tyrosine when it converts to dopa and there is again PLP dependent enzyme dopa decarboxylase which removes carbon dioxide from dopa to form dopamine and this dopamine again by the enzyme dopamine hydroxylase it is a copper and uh, vitamin C dependent enzyme makes norepinephrine. First remember there is a formation of norepinephrine not epinephrine ok. Dopamine is also one of the uh, neurotransmitter. Okay, so not two here three neurotransmitters are forming dopamine, neuro, norepinephrine and epinephrine. So the main enzymes here is first enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase conversion of tyrosine to dopa dihydroxyphenylalanine and it is a NADPH and tetrabiopterin dependent enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase similar to phenylalanine hydroxylase and dopa is converting into dopamine by dopa decarboxylase to remove carbox, uh, CO2 from dopa to form amine form that is dopamine. And this dopamine can be converted to norepinephrine with the help of the enzyme dopamine hydroxylase and it requires copper and vitamin C. Dopamine hydroxylase is purely dependent on copper and vitamin C. Both are strong reducing substances. Now you see here norepinephrine converted to epinephrine. The difference between norepinephrine and epinephrine is methyl group. So here the methyl donor for norepinephrine to convert to epinephrine is SAM. SAM is nothing but s adenosyl methionine. So this we have already discussed in our previous videos uh, methionine metabolism how SAM is forming and what is its role in various functions. So once it donates its methyl group it converted to s adenosyl homocysteine SAM and the enzyme is n methyl transferase and now epinephrine can be converted to metanephrine uh, again by one more uh, methyl group to be added. So by the enzyme cat uh, uh, catechol O methyl transferase COMT catechol O methyl transferase and to form metanephrine and with the help of monoamine oxidase this metanephrine converted to vanillyl mandelic acid which is the excretory product of catecholamines. So this way epinephrines, norepinephrines, dopamines will form and how they will be converting finally to vanillyl mandelic acid and they excrete in the urine. So dihydroxyphenylalanine once you remove CO2 which is a PLP dependent enzyme decarboxylase to form dopamine. So it is the first catecholamine. So what are the functions of dopamine? It is inhibitor of prolactin and in Parkinsonism dopamine is reduced. So L-dopa is a treatment. Why? Because dopamine cannot be uh, what to say. Uh, dopamine is reduced. So why L-dopa? L-dopa only can easily cross the blood brain barrier. So alpha methyl dopa. So once uh, in Parkinsonism this catecholamines will be decreased. So you are getting epinephrine norepinephrine from dopamine. So what happened you cannot give directly epinephrine norepinephrine. They cannot uh, blood brain barrier will not allow them. So what to do you have to provide uh, dopamine in dopa form ok I mean L dopa. So L dopa can easily cross the blood brain barrier once it goes inside from dopamine you can get epinephrine and norepinephrine. So alpha methyl dopa inhibits enzyme prevents production of epinephrine methyl dopa is antihypertensive so methyl dopa is antihypertensive agent in treatment in 1901 the john abel discovered epinephrine in the same year jockey takamine uh, working independently isolated the same hormone which he called adrenaline it was first marketed as adrenaline for therapeutic use hence the word adrenaline is more used in clinical practice the term epinephrine is more favored in academic circles so what are the actions of epinephrine? So epinephrine and norepinephrine increases the blood pressure so hypertensive agents so that's why methyl dopa I mean like you can say methyl dopa which is an antihypertensive which uh, prevents the formation of uh, excess of epinephrines and norepinephrines. So adrenaline also increases the rate and force of myocardial contraction. Epinephrine causes relaxation of sweet muscles of bronchi. Adrenaline is anti-insulin in nature. It increases glycogenolysis and stimulates lipolysis. So gluconeogenesis in nature that means uh, along with the glucagon it will work. Adrenaline is released from adrenal medulla in response to flight, fight, fright, exercise and in hypoglycemia. In these conditions, epinephrine will release. So VMA excretion, which conditions increased? So pheochromocytoma, it is a cancerous condition. So where more of the 
adrenal uh, adrenaline hormones will be uh, degraded and more bma will be seen okay supra renal gland dysfunction epinephrine excess production neuroblastoma nerve cells and nerve cell damage and norepinephrine excess all these conditions more of these epinephrines norepinephrines undergo degradation to form vanillyl mandelic acid which is uh, i mean high levels of vanillyl mandelic acid is a, a symptom of any one of the uh, disorder next is how thyroid hormones are synthesizing from tyrosine so we have seen melanin synthesis we have seen uh, catecholamine synthesis and then next is thyroid hormone synthesis so thyroid hormones the main things are t3 and t4 t3 and t4 so here more three monoidothyrosine and converted into diidothyrosine okay so first thyrosine will be added by the iodine molecule to form monoidothyrosine so the single iodine molecule is there and again it is converted into diidothyrosine by adding one more iodine molecule to thyrosine okay and if you add one more iodine to form what to say triiodothyrosine which is the active form and again one more iodine molecule added to form tetraiodothyrosine so these are the two biological important forms of thyroid hormones in our body so we are all aware what are the functions of thyroid, uh, thyroid hormones thyroid hormones are very much important for bmr basal metabolic rate and they are also gluconeogenic in nature so they uh, promote gluconeogenesis rather than the glycogen formation or uh, lipogenesis okay they are all i mean like uh, adrenal hormones thyroid hormone and in case of glucagon these are counter hormones to insulin okay so that's all about the specialized products that are synthesizing from aromatic amino acid phenylalanine and tyrosine thanks for watching thank you